now you're awake. So let's start off by downloading Easy to Boot. Go to the home page, click on the download Easy to Boot button and it'll take you to the downloads page. Click on the button again and you'll now go to FossHub which has got the um, fast downloads. And the top one is the one I recommend if you've got a Windows 10 system, just um, that's an installer, so we'll download that. So now when you run the application, it will want to extract the files to a folder on your desktop. So just click next. And it'll extract, make a new file on your, on your desktop. Uh, where the extracted files in it. And it'll then run makeyw.exe from that extracted, extracted file. So there's the application. And there's the folder it's made on the desktop. I'll just open this. Now, you don't need to um, change this folder at all, but um, just as an aside, if you put ISO files in this folder, main menu folder, before you run Make UDP, um, then it will also copy the ISO files across to the USB drive that you make as well. And you could do the same with Linux folder um, or the Windows folder, etc. So basically, you can use this folder as your sort of master folder and then run makeutp.exe from inside this folder here, run as admin, and that will make a USB drive with all your ISOs and image files, etc., already um, on the drive. Anyway, um, now we select the keyboard type that we want and the language. For the, this is for the menu system. Select the name of the USB drive and then click on the Make ETB button. Um, if you want to actually control a lot of the settings and configure the menu a bit more, um, then use this larger button here, which um, allows you to um, set up multiple partitions, etc. But if you use this one, you'll get the default install. So I've inserted a uh, 128 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro drive here. Select my keyboard. And I'm just going to click on the default button first to show you what happens. And you get a prompt just to uh, ask if it's OK. And then the uh, a command script will open. It'll tell you it's a removable drive. And then it'll tell you it's going to format it. So just click on OK. And it'll clean the drive so all partitions will be deleted. So just click on OK for that and wait for it to clean the drive. Now um, you should do this on a Windows 10 system if you have a removable drive because Windows 10 can access more than one partition on a removable drive. If you use Windows uh, XP 7 or 8 um, then it won't be able to make the second partition on the drive and you won't be able to UEFI boot. Um, however, if you've got a hard disk, um, USB hard disk, then you can use um, any Windows version and because they can all see the second partition on the hard drive. So at the end of the uh, copying file stage, um, you should read the text. It's got some valuable information there. Um, and now it wants to add the download and add the UEFI boot files to the second partition. Um, it's a FAT32 partition. It must be FAT32 for UEFI. Um, and it's got enough room for the files, so just say yes here. And it will download the files from the Easy to Boot website, extract them, extract the zip file, and copy it to the second partition. And uh, if everything's okay, it'll go green, and then it'll finish. If we have a quick, a quick, quick look at the drive, you'll see the first partition is called K on my system, and it's got the ISO folder in it and some files in the root and the second partition which I can see because I've got a Windows 10 system even on a removable drive um, and you can see I've got an E2B folder here 
and I've got an EFI folder. This is where the boot files are. It's on a FAT32 partition under the EFI slash boot. So that's actually the boot folders, the boot files for EFI. And we could just test that this will um, MBR boot, so legacy boot, by using the test with QEMU button. Now this is this is just a boot to the um, to the uh, main menu of the uh, USB drive. It, you can't really run many programs in this because it's um, it's a 32-bit emulator for a start. It's an emulator, so it's quite slow. Um, and this particular setup, there's no um, internal hard disk configured in the virtual machine, so. Um, it's basically just a test that it gets to the menu and that your menu looks uh, appears okay. And you can use it for actually configuring easy to boot. You can test out the configurations much quicker rather than rebooting into um, switching your machine your, your system off and rebooting your system. Uh, and then you could just check out the menus menu system here. And it's quite slow because it's um, an emulator. Your system might might be even slower than, than mine. So anyway, when you've when you've uh, you're happy that it will legacy boot, um, you can uh, now test it on a real machine. So now I just demonstrate to you what happens if you use the other button. The other button will um, be a lot more interactive. So it'll first of all ask you which um, drive you want to. Uh, wipe and install e to b2 so you can so if you have multiple drives um, it doesn't matter what you select in this menu here doesn't matter what you select there um, it'll just ask you which drive you want and you can use this menu even if no drive letter even if a drive has, doesn't have a drive letter um, so it won't be listed here if it, if it has got a drive letter it won't be listed so you have to use this button if your usb drive does not have a drive letter and just select the drive number here, so make sure it's the right number. Otherwise you'll form a wrong USB drive, which won't be very clever. Um, it'll ask you several times whether you're sure. Now, it, this time it's going to ask you for all the partition sizes. So this is a, a, approximately a 128 uh, gigabyte USB drive. Um, and the uh, it says here it's 122 approximately, so that's approximate size. And it's asking you for the size of the NTFS partition. Now we need to make uh, uh, two partitions, at least a FAT32 partition uh, for the second partition. So we need to leave a bit of room. So if the drive is 122, um, I'll use 120 because um, a 2 gigabyte FAT32 partition will be plenty of room. So the size could be maximum for the second partition because I only want um, two partitions. And the default is FAT32, so I'll just press enter. So it says NT NTFS 120 gig. FAT32 maximum, make partitions, yes. And then just confirm that you really do want to erase everything on this drive. So this will now, um, first of all, it'll format the drive with the um, 120 gigabyte partition. Uh, and then it'll um, delete the small FAT32 partition, which it makes by default and then increase the size of the FAT32 partition to the maximum size for the drive. And you can see there that it's got the sizes of the partitions are displayed. Now it copies the files across, um, but in this case it'll now ask you um, what default, what uh, settings you want for the drive. So this is to set the menu language. So in my case I want UK. Uh, this is whether you want file names extensions to be shown. So do you want the file name like Ubuntu64.iso to appear in the menu or do you just want it to say Ubuntu64? So um, the default is no, you don't want to show show extensions so I'll say no. Now this is about the um, icon that's displayed on the menu. Do you want a rotating icon? Do you want the ETB boilerplate etc? This is up to you so you can say no. Um, and then this is the myutb.config file which is the configuration file that's made by um, this dialog. And you can alter this later, and you can change the menu, you can do all sorts of things to the um, appearance of the menu, but these are the basic settings that are going to be used. So if it's okay, press enter again for yes to write. Uh, Contig.iso is a file that um, you can use um, to um, boot 
at Linux ISOs when um, you can't make them contiguous. So this will make a large contiguous file on the USB drive. Um, and what it'll easy bit will do is, is copy a non-contiguous file into this contiguous file and then it'll boot from the contiguous file. You really don't need this unless you've got a very small drive, 16 gigabyte drive or 32 gigabyte drive or something. It's very slow and um, most cases you really don't need it. So um, I'll just say zero for none. And again, now it's going to download the um, ATFM UEFI boot files from the website and put them on partition two. So if you want UEFI, UEFI booting, then say yes. Um, now, if you have these UEFI, UEFI boot files on the second partition, some systems will not legacy or MBR boot from this drive now. So even though it's easy to boot is on there, and easy to easy, even though it will boot from an easy to boot drive, uh, just because the EFI files are on there, when you try and boot, it will not give you the option to boot from the legacy boot from the ETB drive. Some systems will only let you boot from the UEFI partition and you can only UEFI boot, even though you've got CSM enabled in the BIOS. Um, if you get come across one of these systems, the only thing you can do is um, to rename the EFI folder on that second partition to something else, just temporarily, and then it'll boot to easy to boot. So that's why I asked the question um, if you if you want these files or not, because if you're only interested in legacy booting, if you're not interested in UEFI booting, then don't put these files on. And the alternative is, of course, you can make two easy to boot USB drives, one with this EFI boot files and one without the EFI boot files. So one you can use for MBR systems only, and the other, the other pen with the EF, EFI boot files, you can boot to most legacy systems and UEFI systems. So when you get a green screen, everything's downloaded and everything's finished, you can quit. So just to stress again, if you've got a Windows 10 system, then you'll be able to see the second partition and the utility will be able to make the second partition on the USB drive. If you've got a Windows 7 or Windows 8 or XP system on, and you've got a removable USB drive, a flash drive, you won't um, see this large second partition. You, you can see a small second partition there, which is made by default. Um, but you can't, you can't copy files onto the second partition because Windows can't see the second partition on a removable drive. So you have to use a Windows 10 system if you've got a removable USB drive and you want to make an easy to boot uh, Uf UEFI bootable partition on it. If you use a fixed disk, a USB hard disk, um, then you won't have a problem because on fixed disks um, you can have multiple partitions on any Windows OS. Okay, so having made your easy to boot drive, now let's put some payload files onto it. So uh, let's open up the easy to boot first partition. You see we've got this underscore ISO and then the menu folders are in capital letters here. So those are the, going to be the menu folders. So if you stick a file in, in main menu folder, then the uh, menu item will be in the main menu, um, in, the me in the main menu menu. If you put it in the utilities folder, then the menu item will be in the utilities menu. So um, I've got here, it says seven zip, but it's actually um, an ISO file. So I've got here a Windows 10 ISO. Now Windows 10 ISOs you can put in the main menu folder or even the Linux folder um, but I recommend that you put it into the corresponding folder under slash under ISO, ISO windows so just copy the file onto your um, USB drive in the correct folder so if you've got a, a Windows Windows 8 ISO copy it in here if you've got um, a Windows uh, 7 folder ISO, copy it into here. Um, now the other file, file I've got is um, an Ubuntu uh, ISO 64-bit um, ISO file. So we want this to be in the Linux menu, or that doesn't have to be, you could put it in the main menu or put it in the DOS menu if you like, it doesn't really matter. Um, and we'll copy the um, Ubuntu file into there. So the ISO file is now copied into there. 
And then the last file um, I've got is an, a partition image file, an image PTN file. Now, if you've got the um, two partition system with the EFI file in the second partition, um, you would ought to use image PTN 23. The 23, the 2, 3 tells it to keep partitions 2 and 3 if they already exist. And since you want the um, UEFI files in partition 2 to stay, you don't want to get rid of the partition 2, otherwise you won't be able to UEFI boot to that partition. So um, if you've got already got existing image PTN files, just add the numbers 23 um, onto the end of them. Uh, this one is a Windows 10 image PTN file. Um, now you can put these in any folder you like, again, um, but because it's a Windows 10 um, file, it makes sense to put it in the Windows 10 menu. So I'll drop that into there and it'll copy it across. So that's finished. So this, this folder also has some um, XML files in it. And these XML files are quite useful because um, it allows you to automatically select um, Windows Home, for instance, or, or Windows Pro. Um, and in some cases, for instance, with Windows 8, if you run an ISO from Windows 8, it will ask you to input a, um, well, normally it will ask you to input a product key. And you have to enter in a 25 character product key if you know what it is. Um, however, if you select one of these uh, XML files, um, then, for instance, that one there, core no prompt, that will automatically select uh, Windows Core, Windows Home, and it won't prompt you for um, the key, and it won't prompt you to repair, it'll just go straight to, into your setup. So that saves you having to type the key in. So after you've copied all the ISO files and your payload files onto the drive, you should run make this drive contiguous because um, the, the files on the drive most of the files on the drive need to be contiguous. Um, actually, the Windows ISO files don't actually need to be contiguous. And if um, if the utility can't make them contiguous, then um, you don't need to worry. But um, Linux ISOs, for instance, it's best if they're contiguous. They'll they'll run uh, without any trouble if they're contiguous. If they're not contiguous, they may or may not run correctly. And now our, our USB drive is ready. That's all you have to do. Just copy the files on there um, and uh, now we can MBR boot we can legacy boot to this drive or we can um, UEFI boot okay now I'm going to e UEFI boot from this drive but if I do it on a real machine it's going to be really difficult to record it I'll have to use a, a camera and um, it'll be very shaky and the screen won't come out very well so I'm going to use a virtual machine to UEFI boot from this uh, USB drive. So I'll select um, UEFI 64 uh, boot method for the virtual machine. Um, this is um, VMUSB, which is extremely useful, works with the virtual box. Um, and it will boot the, UEFI, uh, the USB in uh, UEFI 32 uh, or UEFI 64 or legacy boot with a 32-bit or 64-bit um, CPU. So let's just try UFI 64. Now this should boot to the second partition because it's got a fat, it's a FAT32 partition and it's got the UEFI files on there. So this is now booted to um, HEFM, the Alive Grub2 uh, file manager system. Uh, and all we do is go to our um, first partition, which is where our payload files are. We put them in underscore slash ISO and um, we have them in Windows and Windows 10 and there's our ISO file. So if we select that, so this is UEFI 64 booting and it could be secure boot and we select boot Windows from ISO. Now it's because we've got under 10, we've got XML files in this folder. Um, we can choose an XML file to use uh, to boot from, and you can put different XML files in here to automate the inst the installation if you like. Um, so in this case, I'll choose Pro. But um, if you choose the first option, it won't use an XML file. It'll just give the normal setup experience. Um, if we use Windows 10 Pro, 
it'll automatically choose Windows 10 Pro. Uh, most of the most ISOs have um, multiple editions in them. So if we choose this one, no no key, but choose a version to install. Um, it should prompt us to install um, from all of the editions that happen to be in the uh, Windows ISO that you've chosen. I should add that um, you need to use Windows official Microsoft Windows install ISOs. If you use all in one ISOs, some work and some don't. It just depends on how mo heavily modified they are. So um, there's really no reason to use um, uh, uh, all in one ISOs when uh, you could just install official Microsoft ISOs. You could download the latest version of the Microsoft uh, Windows 10 ISO um, and just add, just copy the ISO file into the folder and, um, and you're away. It's not, you, know, you don't need to fiddle with anything else. So this is now booting to um, Windows 10 setup and it'll actually, you'll see a dialog, a command window open here. What this is doing is it's actually um, mounting the ISO file which it's found on the USB drive and it's mounting that ISO file as a virtual drive so that when you go into setup and setup looks for the sources install.wim or install.esd file on the uh, USB drive it finds it on the virtual drive so when you go to the next menu you'll see all the additions that were in that ISO so this is all the all editions that were inside that ISO because I use the XML file um, so it's displaying all the editions and you can choose the one you want without needing it without needing a key and then you can go into installing it to your drive um, so in this case because uh, I'm using a virtual machine drive one is actually my um, target uh, drive drive zero is actually my USB drive but normally you won't see uh, drive zero listed by Windows if you do it on a real system so that's how we can install under UEFI we can directly install from ISOs Windows Windows ISOs so I've rebooted now and this time we'll look at Ubuntu so we'll go to the first partition again we'll go to the Linux partition there's our Ubuntu ISO file and we've got a number of options here to boot from and uh, the first one is uh, the one to use if the file is contiguous so if the file is contiguous this option will usually boot 99% of all Linux ISOs whether they're old whether they're new whether they change them next week uh, this one will work the second one um, that the file doesn't need to be contiguous and it will use parameters which it thinks um, is suitable for Ubuntu sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't um, Ubuntu should be pretty safe but um, other Linux ISOs sometimes they work sometimes it doesn't the next one if it's got a loopback.cfg file actually um, on inside the ISO uh, these should normally work by using a cheat code which specifies the name of the ISO file to boot from uh, the next one is really for WinP files sometimes it works for other other ISOs sometimes sometimes it doesn't and the next one it loads the ISO into memory before executing it again hit and miss whether this will this works some particular ISOs um, may only work with this uh, memory option um, but others won't work at all as I say that the, the best one to use is this one make sure your files contiguous and always use this um, this boot option and you should be um, good to go uh, so you see this is booted straight away to the um, Linux menu and now should run okay I've reduced the window there so you can see that it's booted to um, Ubuntu so I'll just shut this down and I'll show you a quicker way to boot this file So I've gone back to the ISO Linux folder and I've got to change the file extension now. So it was ISO um, and ISO, the ISO just asks you, um, gives you up a second menu 
um, and you have to choose the um, easy to boot menu option from that. So by naming it ISO def, or I could use ISO default, um, this file extension will just stop the um, second menu option from appearing and it'll just boot straight to Ubuntu. This ISO def also works with the easy to boot legacy menu as well. Um, so uh, you just use this and it will boot straight away. So let's try this on um, EFI and we'll see what happens. So I'll stretch the window a bit. So here, um, here we go to our ISO Linux, and there's our ISO def uh, file, uh, file. So if I select that, see now it doesn't prompt me for that secondary menu. It just immediately boots to the Ubuntu menu. And uh, you can actually boot um, Ubuntu and some other Linuxes with persistence as well. You can add a persistence file. Uh, so you can add your own folders and uh, install your own applications. Still booting from a .iso file. So I think that's finished the um, demonstration of .iso booting. So we also had this partition image file here, image ptn. 23. Um, so what we can do is we can UEFI boot straight to that um, AGFM file manager menu and we can select that file. So let's just boot UEFI boot to the Grub2, a live Scrub2 file manager and we'll go to that partition Windows Windows 10 and we'll select that file Now, when you select that file um, it will need to switch that partition in so what it does it will replace partition 1 which is the easy to boot partition which has the got all of our files on it it will replace that partition with the image with this the image um, so this is a partition image file it's got a sector for sector by sector copy of an entire partition um, so it will replace so just press 1 and it will now reboot and because the first partition is now UEFI bootable, if you've got UEFI boot files in your Windows image, um, it will boot to that first partition. So now it will uh, immediately reboot UEFI boot um, if you've got two Windows. If you've got a real, a real system instead of a virtual system, you can press your F8 key or your F12 key and you can pick which partition you want to boot from. You can boot from the first partition, which will give you this Windows setup. Or you can boot from the second partition which will be your um, alive grub2 file manager partition um, and you can you can boot to uh, a different payload or you can switch back the e to b uh, partition instead of having the windows partition there so i'll just show you how to how, how to do that so now you can install windows um, as usual but you are in um, uefi boot mode the advantage of using partition image files is that this boot was a secure a secure boot um, so there's no shim used there's no grub2 shim used so even though the alive grub2 file manager will secure boot in most cases um, the shim can be blacklisted by uh, in, in some biases so windows update for instance could um, decide one day which it has done in the past actually to blacklist the shim in which case you won't be able to UEFI boot, secure UEFI boot at all to the easy to boot drive. However, if you switch in an image PTN file and it's got a secure bootloader on it, as Windows has, um, you can now you secure UEFI boot from this USB drive off the first partition and you won't have any secure boot problems. And you can add antivirus ISOs, uh, more Linux ISOs. As I say, you can have per, um, persistence with these as well. Um, you can also configure a startup menu for this, and you can change the uh, you can change the menu as well. So you could have a um, a seven 
uh, for instance, theme instead of um, this theme. In fact, I can show you a seventh theme. So here I've got um, a uh, different USB drive, and I've just added the um, seventh theme to it. You can see that it first boots to a startup menu. So I've got my own startup menu here. I've added my own um, menu items into this menu. You can boot to different payloads, etc., from the startup menu. And then after the timeout, it would go to the um, normal menu and um, 